All right, guys, welcome to the Shitcoin TV episode number 17, I think we're at now. Um, today, I'm joined by uh, the man himself, Shitcoin CEO, Andreas Brecken, and also poker aficionado and Bitcoin OG, Brian Mikon. <laughs> welcome, guys. It's a deep pleasure to be it's, here. I, I couldn't be happier. Uh, as you know, uh, Mikon and I are soulmates. <laughs> it's true. That's uh, true. We fell in love. There's a full bromance. It's. Oh, it's awesome. six. <laughs> I, I'm embarrassed, actually. Like I'm blushing. You know, when we speak, I'm it's just you. blushing a little bit. Yeah. You, I, I, some... <laughs> <laughs> the just the uh, the back and forth is so easy and so free. It flows so nicely. <laughs> it's it's like the. I witnessed I witnessed some of it blossoming in uh in Mexico <laughs> in Acapulco, 2018. <laughs> oh, that was wonderful! And uh, I'm coming back next year on Acapulco 2019. Mike, are you coming? It, send the plane. <laughs> send the plane. <laughs> yeah. there. It's actually a brutal travel on just the no, I know, I know from here, from where I am. But yeah. I, I just want to say that sometimes you meet a guy. Yeah, sometimes you meet a guy and he just shares your same ideas on cryptocurrency and general life outlook with a gambling background. I I mean, it just, I don't know. Like I, we were looking at, do you remember looking at old Bitcoin talk posts? And you're like, holy shit, you replied to me in 2013. Like, I actually, um, I, I looked at it the other day. So <laughs> one of my first so projects okay. Bitcoin, we're probably talking like 2012 here, was a casino. It had video poker and eventually, I think, open face uh, Chinese poker. Oh, so which one? On my, on my announcement thread on Bitcoin talk, like we used to do, <laughs> we looked at it together. So I'm announcing my video poker where you can play for Bitcoin. And you were like one of the first people to reply. <laughs> and the most bizarre thing is, while this was happening, we were probably both staying at the Bellagio. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have been in Vegas. And then, you know, we, I learned, you know, later on, you were haunting the Bellagio almost every day. We certainly yeah. walked by each other, I, you know. Oh, so, like, I mean, I was dating a poker dealer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely. Like, and by dealer, I'm a waitress, but I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you dog. <laughs> the, yeah, only the yeah. funny details. <laughs> so we have to jump into this. Listen, you guys run a, a shitcoin.com. This is important. The people need to know about this bullshit that's coming up. There's a lot of shenanigans. Go, Blake. There, there is endless shenanigans, right? So, well, I guess, I guess kind of the center of the whole thing I think it'd be cool to get get your take uh, from both. Well, the take from both of you on on CSW and this, and where you think, yeah, just your take on Craig Wright. Let's just let's just start with that. Let's keep it kind of broad to start with. <laughs> Mike on. Yeah, I'll just tee off on that if you want. No problem. <laughs> so, I mean, when you say CSW or Craig Wright, then you you immediately think of Calvin his biggest supporter, possibly bankrolling the whole operation. Certainly. Cal Calvin is a, like, I mean, this is a mythical, uh, just like highly regarded gambling operator. Since like, since I was in college or something, I mean, it's for like two decades, this guy ran online poker and sports books in the face of many governments trying to shut him down and, and mess mm -hmm. with them. He had, I think it was 40 million seized. Wow. In one of the some such either UIGEA or Black Friday or the other one, one of the actions, I think he gets 40 million in player funds that were destined for cash outs uh, to players and it just gets seized. It's gone. But he still makes yeah. everybody whole during that and like countless other things. So like this guy, like Calvin is like one of the very, very, very few ethical online casino runners for like, you know, for, for decades. It's just, there's a very short list. Isai Scheinberg, when he did stars, he's the same way, just always, you know, paid, you know, never screwed anybody. 
no exit scans, no. I mean, uh, how I know of Calvin is one one thing. Bodog was had been advertising on Wizard of Odds, yeah, which the only place to go look if you want to cheat casinos. He's been advertising there for as long as I've known about that site, and we're talking like since I was seventeen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how like a two two gamblers will know the other one's real when you're like. Blah blah blah. Oh, I don't know the odds. Okay, look it up in Wizard of Odds. Then you're like, oh, okay. Well, like he, you know, he he gets the real information. He's at least trying, you know. Yeah. yeah. So how 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 do you think that that plays into what's what's going down now? So do you well, think everything's pretty? Do you think it's coming yeah, from a good place? What he's doing? Well, that's what I can't figure out because I mean, this is a Calvin's a real guy. Like he's a yeah. you know a legitimate guy. And then you have CSW over here just spewing what I think is just, I mean, it just, it's absolute lunacy is what it looks like. And I'm trying to figure, I'm trying to reconcile it to him. Like, how is this good guy, you know, over here with this guy that's screaming? And I don't know if you guys saw Roger's little video yesterday. Yeah. I mean, I watched it twice. I that one. He's like, I got two letters, you know, one from CSW, one from Calvin, you know, when we had this big ABC versus SV disagreement. And Roger says, he's like, you know, Calvin told me like, listen, you know, you know, good luck, buddy. Basically, when you want to come back, come back. You know, when we all, you know, it's tough to break up the family, but let's get them back together in the future. And CSW fires him this like, you know, that sounds reasonable. And then CSW fires this profanity laced like, you're fucking going to war, bitch. Like, you know, you pissed off Satoshi. I am Satoshi. <laughs> and it's just. I, I mean, I can do my take. Because I'm, I think I'm a little bit more in the trenches on this one. <laughs> so, on on Calvin, it is impossible. But I, I wrote this on Twitter, so it's it's pretty short. I think Calvin realizes how valuable it is to have the Bitcoin name, and even if you just have a percentage, a single percentage of the BTC hash rate or price, that is very powerful. So, what I see happening is. Uh, Calvin will not go out and make you try to love SV. He will let the coin price tank itself. And then he will slowly accumulate like Bitmain did to get a million BCH uh, by exploiting the emergency difficulty adjustment. So Calvin will do the same, but he's not. Uh, Jihan is a hash rate guy. Calvin is a PR guy. So... Jihan will use the hash rate to buy low, but Calvin has a different skill. He's got PR, so he will let it tank itself and buy low. And then when it's kind of more calm, he'll obviously fire Craig. I mean, he's, he's done. And then he'll announce a partnership with Jerry from SBI, which is a very large bank in uh, Japan. And they will say, uh, Bitcoin SV is the only reasonable choice for a business that wants to accept cryptocurrency. It's mm. compliant. It is backed by a billionaire. Um, we have uh, Jimmy Wynn, who is, I mean, the most lovable person on the planet. They got everything. So he's going to sit back, buy low, <laughs> chill out, build ecosystem, recruit some businesses, and sell super high. I don't think the thing is Calvin got into the game too slow. He got into Bitcoin too slow. So this is his chance. He just has to make Bitcoin SV go to less than 5% of the price of Bitcoin ABC. Buy, 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 buy. And he's a patient dude. He survived Black Friday. He can do this. <laughs> this is not. I, I think that it's the statement is based on that there will be two coins. I don't think they're gonna be two coins. I, I don't see any way that there's going to be two coins. In fact, is it not inevitable though? I, from what what I saw, it there's yeah no the, diff the difficulty adjustment algorithm of Bitcoin ABC and Bitcoin SV is different from that of Bitcoin Core. So Bitcoin Core adjusts every two weeks, but it's done in block numbers. So if the hash rates drop, uh, hash rate drops by half, then you're not looking at two weeks; you're looking at four weeks which makes people more desperate. So the hash rate drops more and you get into what we call the, the hash rate uh, death cycle, which is a downward spiral. Mm. But this was fixed on the fourth point. 
uh, by adjusting the block size, not based on block height or number, uh, but basing it on time. And it's also much more aggressive. So it adjusts the difficulty. If it's not every block, it's like, it's very often. So uh, being in my uh, a minority fork uh, as Bitcoin SV is not a problem. There is no, no death spiral in hash rate here. So I'm, I am very familiar with the EDA, but I loved watching you explain it to me. I really did. It was, it's cute. It's so, so beautiful. I think it's four blocks. It's four or five blocks. I think when the EDA triggers, I'm not sure. There might have to be a difference in hash rate between yeah. the two to trigger it or something. But I'm not, worried, <laughs> I'm not worried about the hash rate. It's that the no replay protection. That's why I don't. I can't see the SV chain dying. Yes, there will be a chain split. Yes, there will be some non-DSV transaction that'll happen on SV or some S, some. DSV transaction on ABC that will not be accepted by SV, or they're talking about eventually stealing that in the future or something, but I think, whatever. Uh, I think that was a move to drive down the price. I don't think they're actually going to do that. So, I mean, there will be a chain split, but then I just see the SV chain being just one, no one's going to care very much about it. It's like 96% ABC or something. Mm. And then, and then like two, there's got to be, you know, all the, there's a replay all the non DSV transactions on BCH ABC to BCH SD. They're just going to. Someone's probably got the script already running looking for them. Yeah, you but they already, they already have Polonix now. So Polonix is going to make all the money for the next um, six days. And people like Binance are going to be like, hey, why are we not making money on this? So this is the genius. Calvin doesn't have to do anything. Because they will, the exchanges will list anything out of greed. So you can then approach people and say, hey, look at my coin. It's called Bitcoin, which is excellent. SV, you know, real Satoshi vision. Oh, and by the way, it's, it's listed on all of the major exchanges. This is a classic cold stork attack where you force everybody to do what you want and you don't have to do anything. They have to list Bitcoin SV, otherwise they're burning the coin. It, I think it's going to be awesome to watch this. What, oh, that's I'm so excited. Every, everyone's <laughs> like, oh, what side I are you on? That. How much did you bet on one side? Like you can just watch. You don't have to adjust your bags. You can just sit here and just eat the popcorn yeah. and then right. watch <laughs> and see what happens and like hold your keys and don't make any transactions during it. And just, you know, you don't need to place any ma major massive wager. This is excellent. You don't have to if you don't want. You can. It's great to do it, too. It's like Bob Pierce put it. One plus one equals three. Three? <laughs> like, you, have, you have one Bitcoin. You split it into two. But now the, uh, the sum of the parts is greater than, the, uh, than what we had before. It's amazing. The the popcorn emoji has been getting insanely overused in the past. Like, And, and it's only going to get worse, right, for another, what, six days. But I think mm -hmm. I think the biggest one for me was like you, you mentioned it there, Mike, on the the video that Roger put out. Um, interesting seeing him kind of oh. state that yeah, he's he's not as sold on CSW anymore, <laughs> which is which is cool. It's, it's great to see that. <laughs> what it was. I, I have a really heartfelt one on that, so I'll let Mike go first. Oh, I mean, I thought it was it, it was. Clearly, he was serious. It was difficult for him to make that video. I think that the honesty is, you know, well appreciated by the people that, you know, probably it's an obvious one. It looked like it was a, he was a scam from the beginning. He's tweeting that SEC should he's applauding SEC action against the the bit or whatever it was the decentralized ETH market, yeah, ETH Finex or something or whatever. ETH Delta, uh, right? ETH Delta, yeah, yeah. And we usually call it fun this function, but yeah. It, it doesn't sound like that's what Satoshi would say. He wouldn't cheer regulation against a decentralized ethical exchange. That sure seems pretty wrong. He's going after ABC about being a bucket shop or something. You make your protocol change. No, you're a bucket shop. That doesn't really make any sense to me. I don't get it. Why would Satoshi be mad at that? Like, I don't know. People keeps, wanting to uh, peacefully use the... You know. Now he keeps mentioning kiddie porn as well. It's like he's really like taking it to a kind of <laughs> like a weird place. <laughs> he's not, he's not doing it in like a very diplomatic way at all. 
it reminds yeah. me of that Trump like communication, that post truth communication style that's somehow acceptable today, where you just spew nonsense at a guy. It can be totally wrong, but then you just load up another minigun of that nonsense and keep firing it at you. And then next thing you know, you're on the fifth thing. Forgot about the one, you know, that he said way back there. That was crazy. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't come to visit that time, Mike, but uh, I spent quite a bit of time with uh, Paul uh, Sports. No, Paul mm. Sports. I keep saying it wrong. Paul Sports. Uh, on St. Kitts. Um, and I mean, we, we sat down with Roger just to have lunch uh, at the Marriott there. And obviously, Paul wanted to know, like, Roger, you, you, you got to tell me, why, why do you think Craig is Satoshi? And like, what did he show you? What did he tell you? What did he promise? What did you promise? It's like, because Paul is, Paul is a game theory guy, right? So he's trying to figure out like, what are the incentives put in place by Craig to not only convince Roger, but to make Roger believe that it is in the best interest, not for him, but for everyone to not disclose what was revealed to him. That was the setup here. So we were set in a situation where we're both close friends with Roger, but we quickly realized that someone has set up a uh, a game here that simultaneously made Roger believe that Craig is Satoshi and makes Roger believe that it is in the best interest of Bitcoin moving forward to not reveal the thing that convinced him that Craig is Satoshi. And I mean, both Paul and I understood this immediately. Paul obviously faster than me. So we were looking at, looking at a stalemate. So we agreed after just a couple of minutes that we're just not gonna talk about this anymore because whoever rigged the game is really good at rigging games. So the incentive structure they set up is so powerful that the only thing we can do is to start talking to Roger in a way that would damage our friendship. But thankfully, Paul is so good at this that he just recognized it immediately. It's like, oh, wait a minute. This is set up so to make, uh, to break our friendship, because that is obviously what Craig wants. So we just said, okay, well, we'll have none of that and we'll just not talk about this. It, it's brilliant. It's a hack. You get, you get to the point, you find the point that you cannot agree on anymore. And then instead of going to the yelling or the, no, you got to understand me, man. You just, it's just a fold. Uh, it's, a, it's a complete fold from both. Uh, I mean, Paul folded first and he told me I should fold as well, which I did. You always listen to the best player. Yep. Collusion, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah. So we, uh, we both immediately folded and um, I'm very glad we did because, yeah, I mean, the whole Bitcoin Cash uh, gang or BCH gang, what you want to say, we've been able to work together and made a lot of cool shit in spite of this uh this huge asshole of an elephant in the room but like uh, we did it 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 seems the only way he gets purged is from calvin's doing but you can't know how deep cal like i mean I wonder if like everybody's tricked, you know, Gavin and Dreesen has the blog up still that says like, Hey, he proved he was Satoshi. You know, I thanked him and I left. I, I mean, that's, that's pretty powerful to me. You know, I need that to come down to like, you know, or to need, I, I need an additional statement by Gavin to like have that one sit right with me. Do you, yeah, do you not think though that there, there always seems to be an, an answer to every single thing, right? There's there's always like a there's always there's always a plan B that always seems in in the world of Craig Wright where whatever comes out, there's always this thing in 2020 or something in the in the not too distant future, but just long enough that that is going to cover his back. So it's. Uh, I just want to jump in before we do that one. So um, 
the, the end of this whole thing, I mean, uh, when we did have this talk with Roger, that was um, almost a year ago. And I think I feel the same with everybody. I'm just really happy that Roger is starting to doubt and even maybe YouTube saying maybe you got fooled. Uh, that's such really good news. And there doesn't seem to be any resentment everywhere. I'm just really happy. I think we might be over this one. You, you can't be mad at him for saying that, hey, man, I just realized it and then I said it. You know, you can't be mad at him for getting tricked. It's so hard. Imagine how hard it is. We don't know what the trick, we don't know what the trick was. It could have been like fucking spectacular. We have no way of knowing, so you cannot pass any judgment. It, it would have had to be. Roger's not easily tricked. It would have had to have been spectacular. Yeah, yeah. So, no, I. Uh, this is uh, really good stuff. And it's, anyway, it's, uh, you were saying it's all, uh, always got an answer, yeah. No, and, and also as well, have you just just following on from what you said then? Have you seen now that uh, like a lot of uh, definitely a few people in in the BTC camp are coming forward now and <laughs> saying they'll welcome Roger back with open arms. It's funny how <laughs> one, one video can do that. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, no, I think this is really good stuff. Why not? People don't realize that all the Roger haters get solely focused on, you know, a move that they don't like forking BCH, liking, you know, taking pictures with CSW back there. And they don't, they forget that like, he really is all about economic freedom. Like he's really willing to work his whole life. He really believes it. It's like an incredibly ethical place to come oh. from. And, and like, and it, that part gets lost in what I think was bad marketing for BCH saying that it's Bitcoin. I just, I think that's just one year later. That's just way too confusing. Now it's wrong. It's demonstrable. You, you get a guy open four exchanges and coin market cap. And he's like, well, that's not right. Everybody else, 90%, you know, every exchange doesn't say that's Bitcoin. Like there's one thing that is Bitcoin. They, I don't know. I just, I think that, that a lot of that gets focused on. I would, I would argue that but, everything is Bitcoin, but we should colloquially refer to the thing that has 90% of the price and hash rate as Bitcoin. It's, I, I mean, I don't even see a, there's an argument anymore. Maybe there was a fight for the brand in August, September of last year. Maybe. You could have fought for the brand right then and there, but one year later, I, it's just, it's I just. Think, I don't know. I mean, I I think Roger could fully restore himself to the entire wider Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, maybe wider crypto community, if he if he just gave the Bitcoin.com an overview to either even if you're still going to promote bch more just like a fair representation of bitcoin the btc chain that just like a fair representation of it all the wallets all the resources all the code even just a history that is in your view the history of it just like equal footing even on the site i think would just i think the community would instantly and immediately even giving that concession not making it like more bitcoin dominant of a site but just like Going 50-50, I think he would just win everybody back. I think it would just, I think they would come back in droves. Projects would begin, you know, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I, a big dance party would happen. 